with another one. Uh, I, I wanted to check this video out. Somebody posted this. I ain't had a chance to look at it, but I'm about to look at it because some of the stuff they was telling me about it was like, whoa, okay. I'm about to talk talk our way through this uh, schizophrenic man interview and uh, see what kind of connections, if there's any, that I might have with this. So let's let's just go on and just dive in. It ain't, ain't no use to hold it back and wait. I took my boss to Las Vegas. We went on vacation to spread his son's ashes and meet some family friends of theirs. And schizophrenia just kicked in out of nowhere. Like, I wasn't on drugs, I was just smoking weed, and uh, I wasn't even drinking. And it was just, all of a sudden I started hearing voices and seeing things, and I had these crazy thoughts all the time. And it was, it was schizophrenia? Yeah, I still deal with it now. Since uh, it went away for a little bit, like when I was in jail, because uh, I was, um, I'm not supposed to talk about it. If I talk about it, it makes it go away. But if it's if I keep it around, I'm keeping somebody alive. Huh? I'm sorry. What? Uh, it's like I'm connected with another extra, like with an extra dimensional being, and I'm keeping it alive by keeping certain aspects of what I see in my psychosis. It's like real shit. Like other people will respond to it in time, like in proper time sequence. And, uh, Whoa! If you talk about it, if I talk about it, it goes away. So that's a good thing. No? Yeah, unless it's real and then I'm... Wow, if I talk about it, it goes away. It's like when I talk about it, it activates. It's killing somebody. So, so you ended up in jail? Yeah, uh, I heard I heard this dude, or it was like 10 guys raping a little girl. And uh, I was gonna grab a break and rush in the house and she was like, she told me psychically, she's like, don't do that, there's like 10 of them. They'll just kill you and continue to rape me. Do this, light the house on fire, and know how, when they go outside for the fire out, I'll be able to escape and get out. So I did, I lit the house on fire, and they caught me, they got me on camera. And they, was, was there a girl and 10 guys? No, no, just schizophrenia. That was your schizophrenia? Yeah. You, ended, you ended up in jail? Yeah, for a time. Like, like it's, it's weird because, like over time of doing psychedelics, like you hear all these different voices, and it's, it's, it comes from like people you probably ran into, different people you met, family members, friends. It, it come from all these different places. But then just to have one, not the one that you listen to or hear every day that sounds like you, but another one that sounds like somebody else. Bro, that's crazy. That's like, it, it, it how you feeling like you crazy. And, and and it's wild because I had experiences to where I've heard many, like I heard the people voices that were even here, like you know that was in Discord back in the days. Other people and they were popping in and like saying different things. I could just hear, but it was like my face popping in, using their voice to say the thing that they were saying. But I'm going, if one of those voices actually was able to just stick around all the time, that would be, bruh, that's too much. We are legion. Murder. Wound up going to prison for arson. Oh, prison for... Yeah. Huh. Dang. And it was all because of your schizophrenia? Yeah, I had, uh, I even had three doctors. I was fighting my case in GI, which is not guilty by insanity. And I could have gone to a mental hospital instead of prison. But they were like, basically, if you go to the mental hospital, you could spend your whole life there. Dang. I was like, okay, just give me the four years in prison. But now I got to register as an arsonist and all this other stuff. Uh, is there schizophrenia in your family? No, that's the weird part. My mom, okay, my mom has cancer. And when she went into chemotherapy, she went to psychosis for like two weeks in during chemo, where she thought her, her, her boyfriend wasn't real. He was a computer program and like, uh, there's no way he was gonna come visit her and stuff like that. Dang, bro, that is deep. That's deep because the psychedelics put you in those states to where you'll see reality as that computer program. And I'm like going like uh, as uh, it's a it's a part of it to me that feel like yeah, part of that is true. At the same time, it's true. It's just organic. It's just man. I, I don't know how to explain that, but it's but a part of it to me is true. Mine is nothing like that. Mine is like some ninja shit. 
I mean, like a psychic wizard who can like communicate with people using different methods. Like there's voices on the cars as they pass by. You can hear them talking through the cars or like on the wind or like there'll be like certain noises. You'll hear like a knock of wood on the right side at this time means something like means yes or no. You know, like, oh, uh, that'd be like Eric BB saying, huh? Like when it, when the spirit hit him, it'd be like, it shake his head, yeah. It shake his head, no. Binary. And then there's, then there's like symbols in the sky with uh, like black and white balls of light and they change direction. And it looks like a game of uh, Go. Yeah, 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 you see that. You see, bro, this is wow. Dang, bro, this is wild. You're in your right mind now, so... No, I've been, I've been hearing voices since I got I, I put back on the street. I think it was a stress. Well, I guess what I'm getting at is you understand that you're imagining these things? Yeah, I'm taking my medication and... Uh, but even, I, even, even the fact that you understand it... I try not to engage with it, yeah. but like, it just seems like the more I ignore it, the worse it gets. Like, oh, is that right? I, I check in to see like where they're at and what's going on, and it's like way worse. So you're fighting this constantly? Yeah. And are you, there is a medication that you're taking? Yeah, how dull? I bet you there's another medication you're taking too, looking at your yeah. knees. Yeah, well. <laughs> what are you taking? Uh, I just smoked some crystal. Oh my god. I had some coffee this morning. <laughs> That'll do it too. Yeah. What the heck, bro? You've you been just... on Skid Row for how long? Uh, I've been on Skid Row for like a week now. Yeah, I just I was in a program Man, when I got out of prison. Yeah, you um, I just got out in November. Thanks for sure. And I've been in the program the whole time. But they kicked me out for smoking weed. It was the second time I got in trouble with drugs there, so there's a rehab program. You can't have any alcohol, no drugs. You can only smoke cigarettes and drink coffee. So now you're on the street. Now I'm on the street. And I fucked off my job interview that I had going on. So I'm not getting that. I might I might start work next week, which would be good. It'll be like $100 a day. So that's like, that can get me off the street. Mm-hmm. Or get me at least with a good 10. I want to go to Santa Monica. Because that's what I'm more familiar with. It's safer probably. Yeah, a little bit safer. Venice is pretty rough though. Like, I've seen people get their ass beat for Venice for no reason. Yeah, we get people murdered here every, every day. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Bad everywhere. And you, you think this is all because of your schizophrenia? Yeah. Uh... <sighs> yeah. I think it's like, if it's not real, then it's one hell of a good, like, <laughs> Hallucination. Like, I... <laughs> if it's not real, it's one. The real, the real is one hell of a crazy hallucination, bro. Because half the time I'll be feeling like we all hallucinate. We all got this schizophrenia thing because we all like live life thinking life should be this or that or that or that or all these different things. And it was only given to us for somebody before us. So it's like we come up with all these different ways that we say, oh, this is how you should live. And it's like, we all playing a role, playing some weird role, bro. I don't know who created this game, but it's somebody. I've done acid a bunch of times and I've hallucinated more on pure schizophrenia, like sober schizophrenia, than I ever done on LSD, ever. I saw the moon get sucked into a black hole. Oh yeah. You know how terrifying that is? Yeah. You're just standing there, you look up and the moon just goes and it's gone. And it's gone, no moon in the sky. I can dig that because I seen this giant entity standing behind the moon and it was like, and it was crazy because the clouds started to come in and they started moving and when they did, bro, they was shaped around the moon and made the moon into an eye. And the eye and the clouds and stuff, they shaped into a cyclops. And it was a giant cyclops and he was reaching down to grab me. And I I ran in the house. I'm just saying. I was scared. And then you know that Earth is next? We yeah. in that black hole already. Apparently we're in a realm called Ninjago, which means like we were sucked up by a black hole and we are, California is like the last of the earth that's left and it's orbiting this black hole and there's other Ninjago realms that have been or- sucked into the black hole too and they orbit it too and we can hear them on like the sound of cars and they can like send clicking noises over here. Oh and wow. Like this, and you might cause a click where somebody is with nothing to cause it. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 that's deep. 
nothing but ninja. You hear that, wild man ninja? I knew you had something to do with this. Just random noises. But there seems to be like always a pattern and a method to what's going on with the random noises. They all organize. And, and, and like th that's one thing that, that Shroom show you. That with everything that's going on, it don't just be that, but you start to pay attention that even those sounds, those clickings, those different, like different phrases, just different, man, it's a straight pattern. It's a, it's, we called it the, the pattern network, man. The pattern network. You're straight together. And has the Crystal Matthews uh, increased when, or accelerated your- Okay, when I was, First in psychosis before I got put on medication two, three years ago, two years ago. About three years ago is when I went into psychosis. And I was in psychosis for a year. Damn. And I wound up walking all over. I went from Las Vegas, I took a bus through LA, up through California into Sacramento where I had some friends that were staying with, that I was staying with. And uh, the voices were like, they're cannibals. They're trying to sell you for $10,000, $10, get the fuck out of here. So I'm like, oh shit, I gotta go. So I just left and just and split you, up my friends. You can't override these thoughts knowing that they're just No, yours. no, I have to like, I have you to- believe it. I have to acknowledge all of the bullshit that they're throwing at me while still simultaneously saying, nope, I'm ignoring it. That is wow, bro, because it's like, you, like everybody, we all have a lot of these wild thoughts or these crazy thoughts that go through our mind. And uh, most of them we don't pay attention to. We don't, we don't adhere to them. We, it's like, we just hear it and be like, ah, we laugh at it or something and keep going. And this is like, I guess this is like when you start to actually give in to those voices or you hearing them more or, or they're a lot louder and you let them kind of take over and control everything you do. <laughs> Bruh. And, but you don't have no control, which I can't, you know, I'm going, dang. Bro, that is wild. And that's how I make it to from point A to point B. Otherwise, I would just be walking, reading the ground all the time, doing these weird dances and shit. It's gonna be hard for you to have a job. Uh, I can focus. Like I just I earned a little money today helping somebody wash their car. I only got stuck a couple times. And the job that I have applied for that I'm waiting to hear back on it was just picking up trash with Caltrans. Oh, yeah. yeah. I wouldn't put me in charge of anything like that has a lot of responsibility. Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing you could have done to avoid this. No, it just kicked off out of nowhere. Like, see, okay. You were how old? Uh, 29. 29. 29 when it, all, when it all started. Which is a little bit late. Okay, for one, you feel me? Like, I understand you're going through a lot of things, but how can you be talking about getting the job and you just like, you know, I had, the, right before this, I just smoked some crystal meth. It's like, you, <laughs> you're not headed in the right direction. That's not a good start. That's not a good thing to even say on camera when you looking for a job and then this thing got a million views. It's somebody, it's somebody at your job that's seen this video that's going to be like, oh, that look, I don't know what's going on, but uh, nah. For schizophrenia. Which is very late for schizophrenia. Uh, I've even seen on some doctor show like schizophrenia doesn't just pop up when you're older. Like, yes, it does. And again, oh, no wow. drugs. No drugs. I was sober. I was just smoking weed pop. at the time. Yeah, I was just smoking weed at the time, and all of a sudden, I'm like getting horrific images of my brother being filleted alive. And maybe there was something in the weed. Uh, <sighs> maybe uh, it's the same dude I always get from. Hey, that's wild because like even on psychedelics, you have those experiences to where you see some scary stuff, like me being in the place where I seen the body parts and all that and then you know it's like first it was just flashing to me because i wouldn't close my eyes because every time i blinked i was seeing this thing for about five seconds this place to where i just had to ball up my fist and just close my eyes and just go and look at the place and i'm looking at it the next thing you know i was in the place that was i gotta find i have to find that experience right there because that was one of the wildest ones like it was twisted everything was made out of twisted flesh and body parts body parts was laying around everywhere and then it was this little thing that came up and and it was like skin twisted and then and it was an eye you feel me and the eye was like blinking looking at me and i was like i said something like 
I said something, I forgot what it was. That's why I gotta find that video. I just remember the thing, once I said what I said, it, it, it rolled its eyes at me and then, well, I think the two, uh, two other smaller eyes popped up on the side, then that's when it rolled its eyes at me and I was like, man, somebody is playing with me. I don't know who it is, but this is a joke. This gotta be, this is a joke. <laughs> We always smoked together, so like he wasn't tripping out, right. and I, I just was playing Uno with some kids. And next thing I know, I had to get out of there. You we can do it. Yeah. Uh, well, the best way I've heard it explained is like if you do a lot of hardcore drugs, like crystal, heroin, LSD, ecstasy, Molly, stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you're you wrong. Look, your brain on. chemical balance. Happens. Let me stop, right? Let me th like that's too much, bro. That's that's too much. Like all them hardcore, I, I I wouldn't have never. I couldn't see myself even messing with all that stuff. Like now, okay, the Molly, yes, the LSD, yes, but that's it. That's it. You feel me? And and it wasn't to you know make a habit of it. It was just using it for you know for personal understanding. But you, that's doing too much, man. Has like a pool that fills up with schizophrenia. Like this pool fills up and eventually you get to the top and whatever just spills over is the psychosis. And uh, I used to slam Crystal years ago. Uh, before your schizophrenia kicked Yeah, before my schizophrenia. I had been oh, sober for like man. a year and a half and awesome. I went to psychosis. Dang, he's just tripping. And, uh, and like six months into my psychosis, I relapsed again. Started slamming, started smoking. Uh, I, okay, before, when I was, when I was in psychosis, before when I started smoking meth, the voices got violent and loud and like Damn. bad. Before when it was just weed and tobacco, they were like, I was building a boat. I was trying to communicate with this girl in San Francisco. I could see San Francisco from across the bay the whole time. So I'm like building a boat. I'm going to go see her. And then, uh, one day I decided, you know what? I deserve to do some crystal. It's been like two years almost. I deserve to do something. And I did a shot. And that's, that's when I went fucking, it just all went bad. Man. Like the voices became violent, like people raping people and killing them in houses and shit. And I couldn't do anything about it. How old were you then? 29. That is wow, bro. That is wow. Cause I mean, once you, once like, and you don't even pay, like we don't really pay attention to the different things that our mind creates or that it, it put in our face. And like, that would be one thing, you know, if I didn't understand it too, I'd probably be hella freaked out. Like right now, cause we like, I didn't have experiences to where all that stuff was going on, but I was all of it. So if I was, if I was murdering somebody, I was also the person getting murdered. I was looking at it from every angle you could think of. Like I was, I was playing both sides of every position that like of everything that was going on. It was me. Yeah. And it's like, bro, that feeling is, that's it is, is it, it'll make you scream. Like, cause you, you don't be able to take all that. It's like, what the, what the, what's going on here? <laughs> Maybe 30. So, so you were saying you, you weren't doing harder drugs. I did harder drugs when I was like 25, 26. And then I quit for like a year and a half, two years. And then when I was like 29, so I did, I did it for like, I did it for like a year, so I guess it was like 27 when I was doing hard drugs. So 26, 27, something like that. And I did it for a year and a half, a year, year and a half. Then I quit for a year and a half, two years. And then, and then I relapsed in my psychosis. This oh, time oh, when so, I- So you had your schizophrenic episode or whatever, and then you started using crystal again. Yes. I see. Yeah, and it made it so much worse. It made it worse. Yeah, I when it was did. just weed and tobacco, the voices were like, go find your family, go find something to eat. We're gonna direct you to the next meal. And then they would, the voices would walk me to the next meal. They walked me to the hospital one time when I, I had sex in an alley with some chick and got gonorrhea. And my ah. testicle was this big. I couldn't ah. even walk. It was huge. Oh. And, uh, you're gonna have to cut oh. this part. <laughs> okay. And uh, I typically don't. <laughs> so, hospital. I can't walk anywhere. I can't even get to the water fountain. I, I flag some dude down. I'm like, hey, can I use your phone? But the voices are very adamant not, that I don't use technology. That I don't even touch technology. Like, because apparently I've got like different magic built up in me, and when I touch stuff, it transfers to it. 
And if I touch technology, then I'll put magic in technology and destroy it. <laughs> Whoa. Hey. You seem perfectly Hey, safe. it's crazy because when 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 I be off the shrooms and I look at my phone, like say if my phone is sitting over there, I'll look at it and then it'll be like uh, a, a triangular light going up like that. Not not too high, only about this high off the phone. And I can see like the star constellation just kind of spinning around. It's like different star constellations just kind of forming and changing, bro. It's the weirdest thing. And, and, and sometimes it'd be shooting the little sparkles off of it and it'd just be, oh man, it'd be, the, it'd be like some weird... It'd be some weird technology looking stuff, some futuristic stuff, bro. Sensible, except you're saying ridiculous, crazy things. Right, <laughs> right, right. It's crazy, are, are, are it's you, not. What's, what's the craziest thing you've concocted, your imagination or your schizophrenia? Oh, the craziest thing that's concocted? I mean, I mean, you've already mentioned a few that are... Probably that I'm God. <laughs> yeah. That's probably the craziest one. Everybody get that one. And, like... When you dive in on psychedelic, you're going to get that one right there. You're going to get it. But apparently, God and the devil are the same incarnation, just at different lifetimes. If, depending on how much the people, the, 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 the people are actually the psychics. This is the main collective psychic group. They control who is who. What yes. names you get issued, what, what names you'll get issued, stuff like that. You know, like, you're God, dude. You're obviously God. Every time I go to the beach, if I throw... They just... Oh, my God, man. Like... And this is why you be feeling crazy sometimes when you see this and you understand it. Like every person is God. Because through their own belief system that they're creating in their mind, they're, they're the ones making things so. You're creating the good and the bad yourself. There's nobody outside of you doing it. Even though you might get thoughts from outside of you, you still making the choices to say what is good and what is bad. It's like we constantly doing this and we still, it like even if you choose, it don't matter what God you choose, you're still making that choice. Even if whether you're born into it or not, you're still making the choice going, okay, this is who God is to me. And you take all those things and you build God the way you want God or you choose God to be. That's that's the it's still it's it's still you, bro. It's still you. When I look at nature, if I'm walking on the street, if I look at nature, the message is very clear. Throw them in the ocean. Just throw them in the ocean. And then when I go to the ocean, they're like, You're God, you have to do these things and you'll have magic. Oh my God, That and, and I'll be talking about this too, like I could just be driving down the street, I could be looking at the trees. Every time I look at the trees, I can see the trees as the lungs of, of this thing, or like, I, I, I actually go into the oneness. I don't call it God, I call it the oneness, which is God, you go into that God mode, and then you, you can understand and you can see everything so clear, you become one with all of it. And it's like, bro, you experiencing this off, off, I was about to say crystal meth, <laughs> off schizophrenia. Magic, and you'll get food and you'll have everything you want, but you're going to have to be homeless because you're also the devil. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. That is deep, When, when bro. I started, it was- That is deep because, I, like, I seen that too. Like I seen, you know, I see, I seen aspects of that too, to where the homeless people were all like the real, the real gods or, or, you know, the Jesus type spectrum of this thing. You feel me? Because they're homeless. They're getting everything for free, but they, the devil too. So they're not recognized as God because they're both aspects of it. So they go to the lowest point of of what this thing is, what we are in, the, the reality or we are in. They go to the lowest point, being homeless, living on the street. And oh my God, bro, this is crazy. <laughs> kind of interesting. It was just me in a tent in Sacramento, hearing Will Smith's voice outside of my tent, explaining to me that one of us is Jesus and one of us is the devil. And we had to figure out which one was which. And I was like, obviously, Will, you're, you're God, right? He's like, oh, well, then you're the devil. And that means you, you inherit the earth and all the magic that comes with it since we're going into this magical realm and uh, you'll be able to hear hear things and see things that nobody else can believe 
if only if it wasn't for the fact that they can all see out of your left or right eye, depending on what kind of, like, if they're uh, 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 an ah or a woo. Whoa, 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 that's deep. I know it doesn't make any that's sense, deep. but I know it. They're, they're distinct peoples ah, from other dimensions. It do make sense. One focuses on technology and the woo focus on magic. And we get sucked into uh, a woo black hole, is magic. which puts us in the magical realm. And the Illuminati is still trying to use magic. So they're preventing, or they're trying, still trying to use technology. So they're trying to prevent me from going back with the Wu, so I can bring magic back more prominently in the world. Hey, that that is trippy, man. That is trippy because to me, like I see that both aspects, the technology and the magic, is the same thing. It's just you're you're taking the magic out of yourself and you're putting it into something that's outside of you. Which you you using it for something outside of you anyway. But I'm just saying, bro. This is a trippy video. The the hey, the connection is real. That's all I can say. This is deep. Yeah. Just despite what you're going through, you see. Put this in the magical realm, and the Illuminati still trying to use magic, so they're preventing, or they're trying, still trying to use technology, so they're trying to prevent me from going back with the Wu, so I can bring magic back more prominently in the world. Wow. Yeah. Just despite what you're going through, you seem pretty upbeat, and you don't seem depressed or. Well, hi, that helps. Oh, you're high. Yeah. <laughs> I'm high. Do, you, do you get That's depressed it. over this? Not really. Uh, sometimes, like, some bad things will happen. Like, there was a girl I was talking to in, uh, San Francisco. Apparently she got raped and killed by, like, ten dudes. And then they hit her body in the, tra in the subway station. And, uh, this is when I was across the bay trying to get to San Francisco. And when they did that, I just started rioting and started, like, spray painting cars and smashing windows and stuff. And, like, talking shit. It was, like, one of the few times you, you might have actually seen me talking to myself out loud. Because most of the time, I'm psychic. Or I can just like answer using these colored lights that I can see floating around in control by doing like this. Uh, Dang, I can give answers true. to the other psychics depending on what they see and stuff like that through my eyes. I've heard so many of these stories now <clears throat> and it seems the mental health issues can bring on the drug use and the drug use makes the mental yeah, health issues worse. Yeah, it's called dual worse. diagnosis. Dual diagnosis. make each other worse. Yeah. What, what are some of the craziest things you've experience with your schizophrenia? Ooh, well, when I was on my way from Sacramento to Port Richmond, which is right across the bay from San Fran, uh, about halfway there, I was like, the whole time I was walking from Sacramento to the coast, I was hearing psychics talk the whole time. You walked from Sac Sacramento to San Francisco? Yeah. And uh, I was hearing some uh, And it's weird because dang, bro, like when you get into these places. Like, I, th I think we all hear voices. We just learn how not to pay attention to all of them because I had experiences to where I seen everything that I was saying or ever, like even right now, it wasn't my words. It was stuff that I picked up along my journey. It was sentences, phrases, meanings and ideas that I picked up away from my journey. And like every time I would say something, I could see where it came from. I could see the person over here where it came from saying it. And then like, and like th th he'll say this little bit, he'll say this other person over here will say a little bit, and then this one will say a little bit, and it'll all make one complete paragraph. But it was like all coming from different sources, and it was like, oh, wow, bro. So I kind of understand what he's talking about when he say that. Psychics the whole time. And then about halfway through there, I started seeing these symbols like appear, like black orbs just appearing in front of me. And like knocking stuff over or like moving tree branches, shit like that. Like they were, they had mass, they were moving stuff. And uh... Damn. Oh. What that horn mean? Anyways. So uh, a voice came into my head and they just dominated the rest of them. It was like, choose an eye. So immediately I shut my left eye and I closed my left hand. I don't know why. I still don't know why. I, I just know that like each finger is assigned to types of people and 
by which finger I use open or close will determine which, like, who can access my mind or my field of vision at that time based on how their hand is positioned. Whoa! So even if they're like on another, like in another dimension, another, another universe, like another reality, there's a me doing this right now. And uh, this what I was talking about right here is that every movement here in another reality is something else going on that's close to it, but not the same. But this movement, right, like like with me going like this, in some other reality, somebody getting scared of a dog or something going by and it spooked them and they went like this. Yeah, it, it's like that connection is like with, with mushrooms, you see that connection. You see how the realities overlap each other and they're all intertwining with, with each other. That's why I said it'll be hard to live in all the realities and and have them all going on at the same time to where you can see them you feel me because you'll be you your mind will be all over the place that's why we stick to this one we stick to the one that we in while we're still sticking to that other one that we in somewhere else and that little fractal of us is sticking into that one and it's even remember when i took the ayahuasca and i was uh I was ISIS or whatever that thing and when I put my hand over my eye it, it created reality and reality did like reality from the beginning to now was just this me going like was that giant God creature right there just going like this and that made this whole reality and it was like oh man bro whoa bro yeah for him to see this without this, the, that's just wild. I've walked wild. the rest of the way from uh, Sacramento to Port Richmond with my left eye shut and my left hand shut. And I was eating cigarettes the whole time. I was eating like, I would, I would uh, get tobacco off the ground and like roaches that I found, people's weed roaches. And I'd roll them up into spliffs and smoke them. And I would go sins for people so they wouldn't snitch on me to the Illuminati on where I was because I had to deal with the Illuminati that I was going to let them turn my skin into a Bible. No wonder you had to walk. No, no, no one's going to pick up a hitchhiker like you. What? Right. Yeah. What did he say? He <laughs> the Illuminati. They was, they was going to turn my skin into a Bible. I wonder where did that come from? How did he come upon that? I wasn't even trying to get in cars. I tried to stay off the road as much as I could. I walked through like woods and fields and shit. How long does it take to walk from Sacramento to San Francisco? Uh, five days. Probably a bus that would do it in a couple hours. Probably. I left all my money in Sacramento though. I thought it was the apocalypse. I met I met this guy who uh, told me he was deaf. Psych he told me psychically he was deaf. I was like, oh, that makes sense. So he, so he don't let me touch you. And the whole time he wouldn't touch me. And uh, so for the next three months, I tried to build a boat in Port Richmond with my left eye shut and my left hand shut. And I was saving up fire magic in my hand. So that one night when I opened my fingers like this, I saw a red spark between my fingers. I closed it again. And my left eye was like a camera that the Anunnaki could see out of. And uh, the other psychics could see out of. Probably like in an Illuminati. The Illuminati operate based on lies. That's how their magic works. Like, Which is, they don't see, need real it's crazy that, you know, all this stuff is like kind of connected because when you even go in on, on DMT and you see these Illuminati things in there or Masonic symbols and, and you know, checkerboard floors and different things that's, that's dealing with like that right there. And it's like, it's a connection, but I don't know if he went too far with it. I don't know, bro. This is wild. No, Ninjago, like, wow. which is like creating a sound out of nothing. They use radios, like, and they'll try and time like honk, horn honking to mean yes or no, depending on where it is. So that's why you were distracted by the horn honking. Yeah, inside. yeah. It was basically a warning, like, if you talk about this, we're gonna kill you. That was a message. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I hey, I honk, felt that. Time, yeah, I didn't even watch this part. This, they're gonna kill me. I had to do a whole but part whatever. too, bro. I'm not really worried about them killing me. So when you're sharing these stories about the Illuminati and all these other crazy things, yeah, do you understand that they're kind of crazy or do you, or do you believe them? I don't know. I like to think that it's just crazy shit, that it's just schizophrenia. There's nothing I can really do about it. But then sometimes something will happen, like somebody will just pop up and say one word at just the right time 
that means that it's all real. You and, and and that's what get me right when I'm on when I take have the the psych, when I dive in on mushrooms or DMT, and the next day I'll start having these deja vu's or something that I seen on my experience will play on the TV or somebody will say something to me and then the TV will say the same thing and then the radio will say the same thing and it's like it's like I. I I don't know if it's me messing with myself or I'll be like, is there somebody out there is playing a game on me? This is a cold game right here and it needs to stop. What I'm hearing, like, or like, uh, uh, I'll be standing next to somebody and I'll hear a voice on the wind of this woman I talked to from another dimension. It's like my soulmate, but we live on different worlds. So we have to keep dying and trying to come back on the same world just so we can be together. And I will hear her on the wind, especially when I'm like eating or smoking weed, because in this universe, she's weed basically. And when I eat it, I'm eating her. When I smoke it, I'm burning her. So it's always bad. But the high is like my favorite high. Her name probably. I prefer weed over crystal any day. Her name. If if one of your high school friends who knew you. They wouldn't recognize me. They wouldn't recognize you. No, I have. I have since I used to be clean shaven, short hair. No, but you, the way you're speaking is like. Oh, they, uh, they would know it's me. They would be like, "What the fuck are you even talking about, though?" Right, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, because yeah, you, you were sensible back then. Yeah. Yeah. You never had bouts of this kind of stuff. No, I had seen like a couple ghosts one time, but I was like, oh, "That's a ghost, whatever." <laughs> yeah. But now that I look back on it, like that could have been a precursor for schizophrenia. Yeah. I see some weird stuff sometimes, but I never attributed it to like, I always attributed it to drugs or, or sleep deprivation. Cause I'm That's wild, we all see weird stuff, but I'm, I'm gonna end it now and I'm gonna let y'all go watch this, finish watching this video. I haven't even finished watching it yet, but I got stuff to do, so next time, peace out.